Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Got a fascinating story here about a cat sent to me by a whole bunch of people. Jason, John, Harry, thank you very much. From the New York Post, jury awards Oregon man $1.4 million after claiming landlord stole his pet cat following its mysterious disappearance. Dean Balsamini wrote this. An Oregon man's dogged search for the truth <laughs> has left him nearly $1.4 million richer, at least on paper. Keep in mind a judgment's a piece of paper says someone owes you money. You can try to collect it. If they ain't got the money, it can get difficult. So we'll see. The man was forlorn when his feline sidekick, Frank, mysteriously disappeared. The cat's name was Frank. But he sported a Cheshire cat smile this week after a circuit court jury deliberated less than two hours, less than two hours, before awarding him $1.375 million for the loss of the cat. Now, the cat was about three years old and, uh, again, was named Frank. He had previously sued, claiming his landlord had catnapped the cat. Uh, He said, uh, the jury's message should be loud and clear to landlords. At least this is his attorney speaking. You need to respect the rights of tenants, especially when it comes to pets. Now, the story began when Smith found the cat on the street in 2017 and brought him into his humble home that he rented at a drug recovery group home in Portland. Now, some people are going to say, Steve, is he allowed to have a cat? Well, apparently he was. Okay? So he returned home in 2019 one day and found that the cat had mysteriously vanished. So he sued his landlord and the business that ran the place. And uh, that lawsuit was filed shortly after the cat disappeared. Uh, As they fought over this, the landlord admitted that he had taken Frank saying he believed it was a violation of the lease to have a pet. The landlord said that he did this and that he gave the cat to his girlfriend who then took the cat to a local shelter. Now, some people are going to wonder, okay, Steve, it's great the guy got 1.4. What happened to the cat? Well, we know, and this is good. While the man won all the money in court, he did not get the cat back. Veterinarians found a microchip in the cat and managed to return the cat to its original owner. So this is interesting. It technically wasn't this man's cat. It belonged to somebody else, but he didn't know it because he didn't know it had a microchip in it. And so the cat went back to its original owner. So someplace out there is somebody who has a cat that has another life where it's been named Frank (laughs) and uh, just resulted in a $1.4 million verdict, and they might not even know. They might just know, oh, our cat was lost, and then a vet found the microchip and returned it to us. And that, of course, is a happy ending of the story for the cat. So I'm very, very glad to hear that. But some people are going to say, wait, Steve, are you telling me this man just got a $1.4 million verdict because someone took a cat from him that technically he didn't own and it got given back to its original owner? Yes, that's exactly what happened here. In the years since the lawsuit was filed, the man has gotten married, stayed in recovery, moved to an Oregon resort town called Seaside, and he started his own barber shop. He said, the most important thing was that I got my day in court. I got really lucky because I told the truth no matter what. And that's the end of the story. And so I have to point out a couple things about this, not the least of which is if you view it from the man's viewpoint, he's in this house, he's got this cat, the cat disappears, he suspects the landlord took the cat, turns out the landlord did take the cat you'd wonder what became of your cat. Now, the good news is we actually know. We actually know. And that, that's one of those things. I know people. It's never happened to me, but I've known people who had a pet that disappeared and they had no idea what happened to it. Hit by a car, taken in by somebody else, eaten by a wild animal, you don't know. And those kinds of mysteries, those question marks, can gnaw at you. So as you know, if you watch my videos all the way to the end, it says, remember Milo and Wolfie. I had two Shetland sheepdogs that each made it to about 15 years old. And I had the two of them, for the most part, over the same period of time. Got Milo first, then got Wolfie. Milo passed first, and Wolfie passed. But I had them for quite some time. And if somebody had just decided to make them disappear uh, and then later admitted they'd done it, uh, they'd be happy if all that happened to them was the $1.4 million award. Okay? I can just tell you that right now. And I can also tell you that when I was younger, 
Uh, my family had a cat. I've mentioned before, we've got five older brothers. Yes, say it with me, your poor mother. Okay. <laughs> my mom had six sons. And we got a cat. And I remember us getting the cat when I was four years old or five years old. It was, it was right around the time I turned five. I remember getting the cat. The cat lived to 16. So I remember when I was 20 years old and the cat passed away. That cat was a piece of the fabric of our family. And if somebody had harmed our cat, it wouldn't be like, oh, just go to the pound to get a new one. No. And that's one of those strange things in the law. Because we have things that are property, right? This, this, this is a piece of property. If you accidentally destroyed these and said, hey, Steve, I destroyed your glasses. I'm sorry. Can I pay you for them? Yeah. Ten bucks, another pair. Twenty bucks, whatever they are. Uh, if you maliciously destroy them in an attempt to mess with me, like I'm about to do a video and you destroy them to screw up my video, uh, there might be some level of, you know, pain and suffering there, <laughs> difficulty that you caused me, aggravation and annoyance more likely. Um, and, and yeah, yeah, I, I would be upset with you that you did that on purpose, that you, that you maliciously destroyed something of mine. These are mine, they're not yours, okay? And so in the law, animals fall into a really strange area because you can put a dollar value on an animal. How much is a cow worth? How much is a cow worth? You can look that up. There are markets where they buy and sell cows. Now, it's just an animal, right? But if, if somebody harms your pet, is that just an animal? Because you and I both know, I can go to the pound this afternoon and get a dog. And they're not that expensive. And in fact, quite often, you can get them for free if you're willing to agree to do things like give them the shots and spay and neuter and all that stuff. So the cash value or the replacement value of an animal might not be that much. Okay, I've seen people in front of a grocery store giving away free cats, a box of kittens, free kittens. I've seen that. But it doesn't mean that they have no value. And so when you're in court and you're, and you're explaining to a jury how you've been harmed, you've got to show that there actually was harm, the harm was the other side's fault, and that the jury needs to compensate you for that harm. And the, this goes both ways. On the one hand, you can't say, here's what this cat is worth, because the cat's irreplaceable if it's part of your family. Second, however, is the notion that, well, if it's irreplaceable, what's it worth? How do you put a price on something that is, in essence, priceless? It's not priceless in the sense that it's worth a trillion dollars, but it might be worth 1.4. And that, I'm sure, is what the jury's getting at here. So uh, I've mentioned before, I've been practicing law for 32 years. I've gotten judgments, very, very large judgments against big, big corporations that went belly up, just went bankrupt, walked away from everything, just pulled the plug in the operation, walked away from the smoldering ruins. And I've had a piece of paper says that my client and I are owed $1.3 million or whatever. I've, I've had them over a million dollars and didn't get a penny on them, not a penny. So does this guy have 1.4? I don't know. Uh, I do have to admit, I was shocked in the story. The guy admitted he took the cat. I, I was kind of surprised by that. But on the other hand, we don't know. For all we know, when the cat was turned into the vet, the vet may have made a note of who dropped the cat off. And maybe if the guy didn't, fess up. Maybe his girlfriend would have gotten in trouble. Who knows? So we don't know what motivated that, but the guy admitted he took the cat. And as a result, a jury gave him $1.4 million. That is, they gave that to the guy who lost the cat. So there's a lot of interesting stuff happening here. But again, it's collectible. I highly doubt it. $1.4 million. The average person hasn't got that laying around. But, but it is an important statement. The good part of the story is the cat appears to have gone back to its rightful owners, and that's a good thing. And number two, this guy has gotten his life straightened out. He's gotten married, stayed in recovery, moved to a resort town of Seaside, and started his own barber shop. So I salute the guy, but he probably won't get the $1.4 million. Questions or comments, put them below. I'll always talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. 99% of failures come from people who have had the habit of making excuses.